What's up guys, Techlab here. Now in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at what is probably the coolest graphics card that we've ever had on the channel. But not only is it the coolest, it's also the stickiest. Why is this graphics card so sticky? So aside from its stickiness, the graphics card that we're looking at today is the AMD Radeon R9 Fury X. This is a very old graphics card now, but I managed to pick it up super cheap from eBay. This cost me just around £30 and it came originally boxed, so it was a pretty awesome deal. And it gave us a chance to take a look at some real old-fashioned enthusiast level AMD graphics cards. Of course, as you can see, it is quite unique because this one is a reference model and it comes with a water cooler, which is pretty awesome. A nice little 120 millimeter fan and radiator here. It's got the piping system, the built-in fan. I do believe the coolers on these were made by Cooler Master. It was released in 2015 and it was built on the GCN 3.0 architecture. It has a base clock speed of 1050 megahertz. It has 4096 shaders, four gigabytes of HBM memory, a memory bus of 4096 bit. It also sits on a PCI Gen 3 by 16 interface with a typical TDP of 275 watts. And it was originally released for around $649 which in terms of pricing would have been exceptionally expensive back then, although nowadays not so much because even a mid-tier graphics card will cost you around that kind of price range. This would have been something at the enthusiast level and it was part of the AMD's 300 series. It just was given a different name. For its time, it would have been extremely unique and not just because it's strapped to an all-in-one cooler, but because of that HBM RAM. But what is HBM RAM? HBM memory uses a 3D stack DRAM design with a wide memory bus providing significantly higher bandwidth and efficiency compared to traditional GDDR memory. Thank you for that, Grok. So at least we know now why this graphics card has such a large memory bus, which would have been super useful back in the day, but nowadays, probably not so much. So we have a unique graphics card, something that I think looks absolutely fantastic. It is a little bit sticky and I'm not really 100% sure why, but it is 10 years old. It doesn't have any kind of driver support anymore. So exactly what is it good for in 2025? Well, I think you'll be absolutely surprised at what this thing can do. So let's get it installed into a system and check out a few games. Okay, so we've got the graphics card installed into our benching rig, so it's going to give it the best chance possible. We are running an AMD Ryzen 7 9800X3D, 32 gigabytes of DDR5, so it's probably not the type of system you would pair this graphics card with, but it's the benching rig that we've got, and it will show it in the best light. It is a little bit awkward to fit, of course, because I've had to remove the rear fan of the system for the water cooler. They're not very flexible, these kind of units. I know that they do produce graphics cards now, especially the super high-end stuff can get water-cooled versions of them but for back when this was actually created all the way back in 2015 it would have been extremely unique but we've got it installed it's running reasonably quiet it's got this really cool led on the side that lights up the radeon logo in red so that's pretty cool and then where the power connections go there are these like jumpy up lights to show how much power it's actually consuming which is really really cool when they created these graphics cards they were making something special and we don't really seem to see this kind of thing anymore not unless you're spending an extreme premium but so far it is running perfectly fine but what can we actually play on it? Well, I think you're going to be quite surprised. We're going to first start the game off with something simple, something it should be able to play, even though it was much newer than the graphics card itself with Doom Eternal. We'll see what kind of performance we can get out of Doom Eternal. It is relatively an easy game to play. It's not really that demanding on hardware, although the four gigabytes of VRAM may cause us a few issues here because we do know that this game doesn't like to kind of boost up the settings, particularly with uh, low levels of VRAM. In particular, we probably won't get an ultra setting out of it. We probably won't get a high, maybe get a high setting out of it. I'm not quite sure. A little bit of a squeal from the graphics card at the moment while it's sucking power, but we are running and get 2,500 FPS in the menus. You gotta be careful when you do that with some graphics cards because you can actually blow some things up, but it's just the way that this game actually starts. We're running no V-Sync or anything on this. Hopefully we'll go and double check the settings when we get in there, but hopefully we can get a playable experience. Before we start the game, we'll head over into the settings and we'll see what we've got configured. At the moment, it's kind of defaulted itself. So we're gonna to go to a 1080p resolution. We're gonna to stick to 1080p for all the testing. This card is very old, so we're not gonna get any more than that out of it. We'll just scroll down a little bit, see what kind of settings we've got. We're currently set in a high setting, so it looks like we can go to a high setting. It's gonna be using pretty much all of our VRAM here, but with that extra memory bus, 
hopefully it will run perfectly fine. So let's apply those settings and head into game. Now that we're in game, we can see that everything is working perfectly fine. We're currently getting an average of 88 frames per second. It's just jumped up to 93, 94 with a 1% low of 69. We are using around 3.9 gigabytes of RAM at the moment and the graphics card is completely pegged at around 100%. It is boosting particularly exactly where it should be and the temperatures are not too bad. We're currently running at 36 degrees on the graphics card which is probably expected for a water-cooled graphics card, although I haven't done anything to this at all. It's probably still using the original thermal paste and everything, so it's not doing too bad for its age. The more we progress through the game here, we can see that our average FPS has increased now around 94 frames per second. It's kind of holding out there, so this is more than playable in a high setting. You're going to have loads of fun playing games like Doom Eternal. You're not going to get away with playing the next Doom game because the demands on that game are much higher than this. But for anybody that hasn't played Doom Eternal and you do have an R9 Fury X, you're going to be glad to know that you can actually get away with it. So Doom Eternal plays perfectly fine. Absolutely no issues. Not high FPS experience, but a near high FPS experience. And everything is running really, really smooth with a 1% low now of 67 frames per second. So a pretty decent 60 FPS experience all round. Even our 0.1% lows are still sitting at 61 FPS. So this is a pretty cool experience so far. Now, of course, Doom Eternal wasn't released in 2025. It's actually about 2019, 2020, something like that. So it's about five years old. The graphics card's 10 years old. This game is five years old and it plays perfectly fine. So let's try something even newer, something that I've recently bought. So one of the newest games that are actually in my library. We're going to try it out on Atomfall. Now, I haven't actually played this game at all. I've only literally just done the beginning on a different system. So we're probably going to load in just after the uh, the little bunker that you're starting for anybody that's actually played it. I don't know much about the game, like I say, because I haven't actually played it properly. But we're going to give it a go and see if this old R9 Fury X can actually play the game. If it can play this game, then I think it's a bit of a win. Of course, we're not going to be able to play anything like Indiana Jones. This graphics card just simply won't start it. We're not going to be able to play anything like uh, Space Marine 2. It's just far too demanding. But I do believe that this game isn't as demanding as those. But it is a really new game, so it would be really cool if it can actually play it. So we'll start the game now. We'll just click play. We'll see what happens. We've got the menu system up here. It has a pre-menu system before it gets into the game. I really like that. It means that we can configure the game up before we actually get in there and save ourselves going through all those loading screens and things like that. We'll head over to the settings. We are currently running in full screen, 1080p. We're going to have no V-Sync. We're not going to limit our frames. We'll go over to the graphics and it's currently set in a high detail. I will turn off motion blur, ambient occlusion. We're going to leave tessellation on. But that's about it, really. We're not going to change anything else. We're just going to leave them ones off because I really, really don't like them. So we are obviously GPU selection is the Radeon R9 Fury series card. So that kind of proves that this card is the one running the game. But let's hit play and see what happens. Now, straight away, we've hit an, a bit of an error. It's not necessarily an error, but it's more of a warning. It says, warning, we've detected video drivers which are potentially out of date, which is clearly true because the graphics drivers for this graphics card are really, really old. I don't think they're in legacy mode yet, but they're very near to it and they're not getting any kind of updates. But we should be able to actually skip this. In fact, in the settings menu on this game, you can actually turn this warning off if you want, which is a bit unique. So we'll go past it and we'll click OK. Hopefully the game will start. So like I say, we're at the beginning of the game. This is the first place that you start. You do get out of some kind of bunker and you come out into the wild world. And as our metrics are shown at the moment, this game is actually playing and it's playing really well. We're currently getting an average of 78 frames per second, but it is dropping at continuous is around 60 with a 1% low of 53. I'm not going to do too much in this game because I don't want to spoil it for myself. But what we'll do is we'll have a bit of a run around. We'll see what happens to the metrics. The graphics card, just like in Doom Eternal, is pegged at around 99 to 100%. We're currently using 3.8 gigabytes of VRAM, which is a little bit less than Doom Eternal. So that's really nice to see. And again, the temperatures are really cool at 38 degrees. That's actually pretty impressive and is really showing that that water cooler is working great. We'll just climb up here for a minute and we'll see what happens. We can start to see that the textures are not completely clear here. They are taking a few seconds to kind of load in at a distance. Everything looks really nice, but when it's really close up, it's a little bit blurry. I'm not 100% sure why. It's as if the textures are trying to catch up, but 
in general it's a very old graphics card so the fact that we are currently getting 81 frames per second on average with a 1% layer of 54 just goes to show that it's still got a little bit of life left in it I'm not sure what we can do to actually improve these uh, textures a little bit we'll head over to the settings we'll see if there's any options that we missed before if we go down to our graphics quality it does say that we're in a custom setting we'll go for a high setting We'll make sure that that is actually a set inside this game. We've got anti-analyzing, shadow detail, reflection detail. I just want to make sure that we're going to turn off motion blur. We're going to turn off the ambient occlusion. We can still see in the background the textures are still a little bit blurry. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I think it must be that the, uh, the memory really is causing us some issues. Or the low levels of memory on this card are causing us a little bit of issues there. But again, you can't be... Uh, picky really if you've got an old graphics card like this from a distance everything looks really nice it's just when you get a little bit closer the textures don't really kind of get that detailed they're a little bit blurry but we'll ignore that for now and we'll carry on through the game we're still getting an average of around well i've just reset the stats there and we're getting an average of around 90 frames per second now this is super impressive even of a new game the game does look absolutely fantastic as well in the settings that we've got apart from that slight blurriness when you get close to things the scenery looks amazing everything is quite dynamic things move as you walk through so i think overall this graphics card is doing an amazing job and it just goes to show that even a graphics card like this 10 years old can still play modern games you just have to be picky with the games that you actually play so there we go you can actually play modern games on an r9 fury x in 2025 this graphics card completely shocked me although that game isn't the most demanding game but it just goes to show that you can still be gaming perfectly fine today but that's not all it will actually play there are a lot of other games you can still play modern-ish games that you can play on an r9 fury x so let's take a look at some of them
So as you can see from those benchmarks, there are still plenty of games that you can play with an AMD Radeon R9 Fury X in 2025. And some of them games are actually really modern. You can get a pretty decent 60 FPS experience out of most of them. You will need to tweak the settings. Mostly a 1080p medium setting will actually get you a pretty decent experience. But there we go. The R9 Radeon R9 Fury X in 2025. Let me know in the comments below what you think about this graphics card. I'm going to be keeping it for a while now because I just think it's super cool and we could probably do a pretty cool build out of it as well don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content we've got plenty more graphics cards particularly older ones just like this one to take a look at and i'm sure as always I'll catch you guys in the next one